Teresa has two boys and a daughter who are all involved with hockey, and we've reached her in Ontario. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me. So just for context, Teresa, may I ask you, uh, how old are your kids? Uh, Just how long have they been in hockey? Uh, I guess I've been involved in hockey. I mean, I grew up around the rink as a figure skater watching my brother, but my kids are 21, 19, and 16, and all still playing. So I've been around the rinks with them for about 18 years. Yeah. Uh, so what are your thoughts on this uh, this investigation uh, since it first hit the news in 2022? How, how, how have you been feeling about the game and about uh, about safety? Well, I think... Initially, we were shocked, but not shocked. And then as the story unfolded, we started to really understand how um, unstable processes were around um, investigations when things go wrong. And I think it points to what we can all feel, because if you don't have, if, uh, if Hockey Canada is supposed to be the gold standard, and people would argue with me about that now, certainly, but if they're the gold standard and their players are the gold standard, and if they're not upholding values that we see, that we believe should be associated with a game that we see as uh, traditionally our game, then how is it supposed to be upheld anywhere else? I think that that's a big part of how it all seems to fall apart. What are your greatest concerns about how this has been handled by Hockey Canada? Transparency, of course, uh, becomes number one. Uh, the fact that no one knew about the fund um, that was being used and, and taken from registration fees, obviously. To settle fact, cases, yep. Yeah, to settle cases. And, and I, I, think, I think it's important to have, a, a, through a risk management strategy, have a fund available, but the fact that no one really understood or knew that that was there and how it was being used as an issue. And I think... Um, the whole process of the investigation, the fact that the the fact that Hockey Canada still to this day says they don't know who the players were that were involved, suspended the entire team, I believe, from international play um, with Hockey Canada. That is not how it would fall out at a local level. So I'm not sure how it's okay that it fell out at that level, um, the way the investigation fell out. So. How, how, would um, it have, how would it have fallen out at a local level? Well, I've been a president of an association and executive member on a large, larger AAA organization. And, um, and what we would have done, the process would have been, something happens, you get wind of it. I would have immediately called my regional director, who would have immediately contacted our, our, our uh, my association would be Ontario Minor Hockey Association. And probably they would have shut down our team completely until they found out what had happened. The players who were involved probably would have um, been investigated further and maybe the other players would have been allowed back. So that's the kind of rigor you're looking for from the national body. Absolutely. And I think that um, the fact that there are two different issues for me, there's the criminal case, which I think will run its course as it should. And I don't have much comment on that because it's going to run its course. But the fact that um, there were behaviors and have been behaviors at hockey, like at a junior level or at any level that clearly go against code of uh, conduct guidelines and nothing seems to happen. Like it should not have to explicitly say no group sex in a guideline for it to not be acceptable. There, there's been a, a lot of conversation around this case about toxic masculinity and, and the culture in, in Canada's hockey culture. Um, do you think it's part of the problem um, or not? I think that the problem happens not just in hockey. It hap- it's happened in our military. It's happened in the RCMP. It happens in many places where there are structures set up where there are power imbalances. I don't think that it's hockey. It's not grabbing skates and a stick. It's not the sport of hockey. It is the systems that are are set up in many places that need to be busted open. And clearly that's the case in, in in a sport that's been predominantly very male and very white. And to see the women's game sort of explode the way it has gives me great hope because... I think that will change. That will help change the culture around hockey greatly. What kind of conversations are you having with your teenage sons about this case, and with your daughter as well? 
Well, I think they're conversations that um, most people should be having and probably we should be having more openly. It uh, really has been a segue into having conversations about consent and about um, upholding respect for other people and about um, if you are ever in this situation, you know, you need to speak up for the person who is involved. You need to not get involved because there are so many risks. But, I mean, we're in a, we have children in a generation who can easily access examples of what allegedly went on quickly and easily on the Internet. And if we're not having conversations with them, with our own kids, or, or at the junior level, or some way of talking about what behavior is um, appropriate, then I, I think that we've probably failed. I think it was interesting when you contrasted what you would hope for at a national body with what your experience has been, you know, at other leagues in Ontario where you live, um, in terms of you said, you know, this could lead to this or that, but one of the things it could lead to if you had an issue and it were dealt with in the way that you'd like to see uh, would be that the team could be, you know, disbanded. It could mean the team doesn't play anymore. Um, how much does that get in the the, the, the potential for... Um, like how much is that getting in the way of things as well? Just the sport, the sport mindset that if X, Y, or Z comes forward, we won't play anymore. Or these talented players, you know, they're looked at as talented players before they're looked at as, you know, involved in this kind of criminal activity, potential criminal activity in this case. Like how much is that a challenge? Just the sport lens through which you're protecting almost the, the, the talent of the player or the record of the team more than you're actually looking at the situation objectively. I think that that's probably a very real, um, I think it's a very real thing. But I also think that there are probably a lot of people who are involved in the sport and running the sport and organizing the sport right now who have been in similar situations and probably done things they are not proud of or witnessed things or not spoken up on behalf of other people who have been involved in things who probably would feel pretty awkward bringing forward cases now. So I think that's a big part of it. And I think it, um, people who are willing to speak up don't, because even if it's not about um, a player who is involved, it's about their own player. You become blacklisted. Your, uh, if people speak up about things that are wrong, you become the problem parent that people don't want on their team. And um, that is something that makes it tricky for myself as well when I've uh, talked about things. Initially, I did it anonymously because I didn't want it to impact my kids. And uh, that's on a very minor level, but I think on a broader level, that is still a very real, um, that's very real. What would you like to happen next, uh, see happen next in the investigation? And maybe um, if you don't want to speak to that because you don't have all the detail uh, in terms of Hockey Canada going forward? I think the investigation is the investigation. Like I really, that, exactly, I don't feel comfortable talking about that because I don't know enough about it. But I, I really have always called for, um, a, a governance training across grassroots level up to the highest levels. I think a lot of people who get involved in running leagues don't know a lot about uh, the liability, about how to run an association, about their legal requirements. And I think that that makes a difference. And how to resolve conflicts um, or their uh, responsibility to report if something goes wrong. I think actual transparency around um, when there are issues, especially with coaches, uh, we we hear of issues of abuse and uh, people coaching in one place getting banned and then going to another pro- another province coaching there. Same things are happening. Mm-hmm. I, I think there needs to be a transparent system, and I think we need to start having some of those um, uncomfortable conversations across the board about what it really means to be a good person, have character, and the values that we want to uphold in our our grassroots associations all the way to the highest levels. Thank you for being with us. Appreciate your time. My pleasure. Thank you. Teresa Bailey is founder of Canadian Hockey Moms and co-author of the book Hockey Moms, The Heart of the Game. If you're a hockey family, we have many in Manitoba and you want to weigh in uh, on culture, on uh, toxic culture, on positive culture, on what your hope is for the game that you love. 788-3205.